Welcome back to our introduction to causal inference course. This is part three of lecture one. In this video, I want to start discussing with you the conditions that we need for estimating causal effects in practice. So at this point in the course, you might be asking yourselves, is it even possible to estimate causal effects? After all, in the last video, we saw the fundamental problem of causal inference, which essentially means we do not have enough information from data alone to estimate causal effects because we only observe one of the potential outcomes per individual. But at the same time, we do want to estimate causal effects. We do need this information, for example, to design effective interventions. So what can we do? And the solution here is actually the solution to any missing data problem. Fill in the missing data by invoking assumptions. In our case, the missing data we are trying to fill in is the counterfactual outcome data, which is missing. Given the fundamental problem of causal inference, whenever we are trying to estimate causal effects, we're always going to need assumptions. However, the plausibility of the assumptions that we need can vary according to study design, quantity and quality of the available data, prior knowledge, etc. So although the need for assumptions is universal when it comes to causal inference, the plausibility of the assumptions is not always the same. It can be greater, it can be lower, depending on the situation. So what are the assumptions that we need? We need three main conditions or prerequisites or assumptions for estimating the average causal effect, which is the quantity we're interested in in this course. One of them is positivity, the second one is exchangeability, and the third one is what I call the well-defined causal contrast, which has two components, absence of interference and irrelevance of varying forms of the exposure. I'm going to dedicate one video to each one of those conditions, and today I'm going to be talking about positivity with you. I'm actually going to say very few words about positivity for now. Briefly, what that means is that the exposure must not be constant. That is, you should have non-zero variance in the study population. You might be thinking, okay, this is obvious. But although it is obvious, sometimes in practice, the obvious gets overlooked. And because positivity is essential, it is important for us to explicitly mention it. Just to give a simple example, if all study participants are smokers, it is not possible to even test the statistical association between smoking and a given disease outcome, let alone assessing causality, which is a much stronger question than simply statistical association. The more nuanced point here is that when it comes to conditional average causal effects, that is the average causal effect within a given strata of the population, we must pay attention to whether or not positivity is satisfied within all subgroups of interest. In other words, estimating conditional causal effects requires conditional positivity. That is, I need positivity to hold within all strata that I'm trying to estimate causal effects. And this has important implications when we're trying to adjust for confounding or bias in general, because the strategy that we're going to be using to just for bias is essentially stratification. So we're going to need positivity to hold conditionally on the set of covariates that we want to use for adjustment. But this is something we're going to discuss in more detail in future lectures. For now, just remember that we need the exposure to be non-constant. We need to have some variability in the exposure for us to be able to estimate statistical associations and therefore for us to be able to estimate causal effects and to that condition, we give the name positivity. So that's all I had for this video. Please stay tuned for our next video on exchangeability. See you then.